Hey guys, Youngblood with you for your first look at the Anvil Carrick, which is now on the PTU and available for Evocati and for owners of the ship. Um, I've got it pulled right now in Arena Commander because obviously the performance is significantly better in here than it is in the verse, and it allows me to kind of show this to you without getting, uh, you know, kind of pestered with. Anyways, um, taking a look at the ship, you can tell um, this is the lighter colored expedition skin that's going to be coming. So this is the limited type of skin that's a little bit lighter. There is the darker kind of grayish one that is your standard by default. Um, upstairs where we're at on the bridge, you can actually see, um, you know, just kind of the overall, um, you know, kind of layout of this ship. Uh, on top there towards the midsection, you actually have the hangar bay that's going to be available. Um, up a little bit closer, you kind of have some of the drone control areas. On the front, you've got the ramp that'll drop down, um, and then you've got kind of cargo space and turrets around. Um, so we're going to go ahead and take a look at this ship from the inside first, because I think that's actually where you're going to get a better feel for everything. Um, where I am standing right now is actually um, kind of the upper upper deck. I'm not actually seated. Um, what you have is a set of controls that kind of pops up, and it's like a standing um, you know control station. Now I think you're a little bit more limited in the functionality that you have in this spot. Also, I think you know if you are kind of traversing space or doing advanced maneuvers, there's probably some complications there. Um, but this is the kind of the best view from the bridge because you don't have the same strut issues that you're going to see elsewhere. Uh, in here you do have a, a hollow globe. There's one of two that's actually on the ship. Um, this one doesn't really do a whole lot for you right now. It doesn't control much, but I like to think that this is going to be, um, you know, really focused on finding elements that are in the area around you. Uh, over here you have the uh, gunner station. Uh, if it will let me in. Um, this controls the remote turret up top, which is actually where you will um, be able to, I'm not even going to worry about it, it's where you control to um, M6A, so size 4 weapons. Um, this is going to be your support station right there. Uh, there is a new elevator system on here. Um, it's kind of nice, you can see you can call the elevator, um, and then it will actually tell you what your current floor is. Um, so now we are heading down to the lower bridge. Uh, and this is kind of your bread and butter of where you're actually going to be flying the ship. Um, captain seat, two co-pilot seats on either side. Um, and again, you can tell that the visibility from this location is good, um, but you know that is an anvil ship, and you do have some struts that are present. Um, so it does have an impact on you know your overall visibility, where you can just kind of see there are those struts that are present. Um, okay. Heading back into the cockpit, uh, you're going to notice that this is actually where you have some of the main computers for this ship. Uh, it's interesting to see this on the bridge of the ship, um, but you can see you've got stacks right here going either way. It's some of your data cores for uh, storing some of your information. Um, you do have a couple of these doors here that don't currently have that much behind them. I don't really know what this component is or what that's for, but there's one on either side. And as we kind of start going back through the ship, we will continue on this lower level. All of these doors are currently working right now, which is really nice. Um, currently, though, there's nothing behind this door, so I'm thinking that's going to be a component at some point. Uh, right behind the cockpit, we have the captain's quarters. Um, really well designed. Um, you can see you've got your desk. You've got a window out to see into space, which is great. These little um, computer screens will actually drop into the platform, which is nice. Uh, you have a chest set and some whiskey, which is well, helpful. Surprisingly small bed in here. Um, again, I think that makes sense for making good use of the space. Um, you have a black teddy bear we can carry around if we wanted to. Uh, and then you also have uh, you know, an EVA suit right there. Uh, and then over here, you're going to have kind of your more traditional closet area. Um, nice to see that you actually have a toilet and a shower instead of the combo toilet. Uh, and then you have your vampire mirror where you don't actually get to see yourself uh, and some nice little amenities. So Captain's Quarters is well designed uh, and pretty large overall. Uh, heading up just a little bit further, um, we're going to have the kind of mess hall, which is going to be where your crew will be spending most of their time. Uh, six seats, windows out the side, it's well lit, you've got um, storage for food and everything, so nice use of space as well. And then on the opposite side of this hallway, you end up having your crew quarters, which is going to be um, where your crew is going to be spending most of their time. You have a pool table, or some variation of pool. Um, you have your bunk beds in here, um, you have the same kind of storage lockers, which are really nice. Um, and a little bit of a couch, so you do have some space for your crew continuing through, and you will see that there are showers available for them in here too. So two showers on this side, 
Um, I was talking to some people on the verse and they were like, well, why aren't there toilets? That doesn't really make any sense. There are toilets. <laughs> you just got to get to the right spot. It's on the other side of the um, pool area. Uh, so once you come in here, you've got, um, again, more sinks, um, you know, more storage areas, but the toilets are hiding behind these doors. So um, it is something that is designed and in the ship. Just got to know where to find it. All right, heading back out into the main hallway area. Um, we are on, uh, or we're approaching the medical station now. This is actually one of my favorite areas of the ship, and you'll see as you come in here, there's kind of the double set of doors. Um, this says stand clear. I'm assuming that this is actually going to end up being um, like a decontamination area. So, you know, if you bring somebody on that's infected or something, they can get cleaned off before they come in here. Um, or, you know, if you just have six patients. Um, you have beds on either side. Um, you also have the full-on uh, auto dock in here and what almost looks like uh, MRI in here. So I think this is going to be some pretty advanced capabilities. This may be what that tier one bed looks like at the end of the day. Um, storage for medical stuff on either side. Um, actually some plants on board, which is kind of a nice touch. Uh, and then the same thing over here. Um, you also have some computer stations. So I think this is where you could be doing some like medical treatment of the people that you're actually bringing into your med bay. Um, very well lit though, and a nice kind of clean appearance to the med area. Um, I'm gonna be honest with you, I haven't gotten this door to cooperate with me yet, so I don't actually know what's in there. <laughs> but we can go ahead and go back towards the, the back side of the ship. Again, you kind of have the little mirror or the windows into the med bay. Um, and then as you approach, you kind of have the back of that like MRI medical station. So I don't really know what all goes into that design aspect, but it, this hallway just wraps around and does the same thing regardless of whichever direction you're going. Uh, this right here is going to be your main kind of central elevator that runs up and down through the entirety of the ship. Um, so you'll notice that once you get in here, it's a little bit bigger. Um, you can see the entire options that you have. Um, so there are four decks in total. Um, we were just on the habitation deck. Obviously, we were in crew quarters. Um, so let's go ahead and go down to the sub deck real quick um, so I can show you what's down here. And it's primarily going to be um, like EVA access. Um, I really like this weapons locker. There's one on either side, and you can see that there's actually an availability for quite a bit of um, you know access there. Um, this is the area to the aft turrets. This is going to put you on the underside of the ship. Um, so we'll get in that real quick. And again, this is going to be uh, M6A laser or laser cannons. Um, so size fours, you have two of them that are going to be on the underside of the ship. The other two are on top, and those are actually going to be on the remote turret that I couldn't get in on this time. Uh, I was in that before, and it worked fine. So I don't really know what the problem was there. But um, anyways, e easy to get in, easy to fire, hard-hitting weapon, which is nice to see. So let's go ahead and go back up towards our cargo area. And this video is going to be a little long. This is a very large ship. Um, so you have little elevators that will take you down to the cargo section. Um, at Port Alazar right now, I believe the number was 456 for the cargo on this. So about 120 less than the Caterpillar. But you have almost a Caterpillar feel where you have to go through all these airlocks and doors to be able to get down to... Um, you know all the different sections because you really have those three core areas of your cargo storage um, after you get past this um, you'll notice you have options for docking collars so this is a good place for somebody to come in on the sub deck otherwise what you have up here is your garage for fitting your rover really designed to be used with an ursa but you can obviously fit pretty much any rover in here you wanted to um, height would be complicated for a ballista so i don't think you're going to see that happening but i don't think you're going to be real restricted otherwise um, big long ramp that extends to the ground up there. Um, I am sure there will be plenty of people trying to fit a variety of things in here, but I think the biggest issue, especially for ships, is going to be the arms that come down and wings. All right, here we go. Let's um, go back up to the uh, main elevator. And since we've looked at the first deck and the second deck, we will now go ahead and go take a look at the technical deck. This is where we are going to see um, most of like the engineering and like some of the components of the ship itself. Um, so we are gonna head that way in just a moment. Deck three. You can always tell on these ships when you're in a non you know crew area, it's always a little bit darker. Um, this right here is one of the cooler doors. It's kind of got this weird angle to it, but it takes you up to the uh, the actual landing pad and the hangar. 
So this is where your uh, C8 would be, your Pisces. Um, this door up here actually opens and there's controls for it on the other side, so I'll open that in a minute. Um, we did try and fit some other ships in here like you would obviously expect me to do. Um, we tried a, a Hornet and a Hurricane. Um, neither of them fit. The width is the real problem there and we weren't even able to test um, height after that. So it, it's a pretty small hangar. You're going to be relatively limited. Um, that being said, you can for sure fit, you know, a P-72, a P-52, which is good because now you're having more and more ships that you can start to bring some of those little snub fighters along. Um, we will continue to test and see what actually fits in there. Um, so you can see it opens up and up top you have the uh, M-6As on that um, remote turret. Uh, off to the side here, um, you do have a service ladder. Um, there are several of these throughout the ship, so you know if elevators go down or you just need another way to get up and down the various decks of the ship, you do have ladders available. Uh, another elevator is available over here. You'll notice that this has an option to get to the technical deck where we are, the habitation deck or the sub deck. The only way to get to the um, cartography room is going to be using the main elevator back that way, um, just so if you are playing around and you get lost, that's kind of what's going on. And this is going to be your drone station. So you can see it almost looks like hab modules, but this is going to be where your drones will stay. And then these little doors on the side that will open up so they can actually escape to the outside. Um, so on either side, there's a door over there, or I'm mean, sorry, a chair over there and a chair here. I do not encourage anybody to get in the drone operator seat right now because it is very challenging to get out. Some people have had to kill themselves. I've had, I've taken damage trying to get in and out of that seat. So I wouldn't worry about it for now. Um, it's a cool area though. You kind of get to see in through some of these slatted windows, almost like the back of like a you know an '80s Mustang. <laughs> um, you can come in here a little bit further too, and this is almost like a repair station. Um, you can see they give you access to some tools and you know various supplies. Um, there's like a little repair machine here. I don't know if this is going to be for repairing armor or weapons, or if this is going to be where you can maybe even do a little bit of science. But it's kind of just another area on the ship that has some cool stuff added into it. All right, continuing to move forward, you'll see that this eventually leads you to where escape pods are, and those escape pods are conveniently located right behind the bridge, the top story of the bridge. So let's go back beyond the um, hangar area, and we will check out the aft of the ship. There's that main elevator again. So if we come back a little bit further, um, this is going to be one of your turrets. This is going to be on the right side, your starboard. You got a nice kind of dangerous feeling red tunnel down to your turret. Um, once you get in, you will see that the airlock closes behind you. And then much like on the hammerhead, these turrets are better than I expected them to be. They actually pop out off the ship a little bit, um, giving you way more range of motion than I was expecting to have on this. Um, so if we come out to third person view, you can see I'm on starboard. Look how far that thing sticks out. Now that's a little bit concerning from a damage perspective. You know, it looks like it's relatively thin arms that are holding it in place. So it feels like it could be broken loose pretty easy. Um, or you could maybe run into stuff because it sticks off so far, but we'll just have to keep in mind and see how that goes. Um, it does have the size four Rhino laser repeaters. So those are good weapons to have on board. And when you look at the range of motion that you actually have, you can easily point towards the back of the ship or the front of the ship and hit the targets that your um, pilot is wanting you to get on target. So um, I'm very pleased with those turrets, at least how they perform right now. Um, we've had some friends that did claim jumper missions and had no issues at all. So it is, you know, capable, even though there aren't really any pilot controlled weapons, uh, your team can at least be effective using what's on board. Um, as you'd expect, once we come up here on the other side of the ship, there's another hallway. It basically mirrors that same experience going over there. Um, when we come in here a little bit, what you're going to see is almost like an observation deck for some of your primary or your main components. Um, again, there's your port turret right there. Uh, and then when you come in here is where we're going to really start talking about your the, the kind of the meat and potatoes of your actual uh, ship. You know, these are going to be some of your primary engines over here. They're very large, um, but you also kind of get into what is just some absurdly large components. Uh, so as this door opens, this is your jump drive. And I mean, if you need a little bit of perspective on the size, I mean, it it's significantly bigger than the character. <laughs> it is gigantic. 
Um, and when you use it in the verse, you feel it. It, it really it goes very, very fast. I think it's a capital class. Um, I'm not positive, so it's probably a size four. Um, but man, the thing just really flies. Um, and there's several areas on this ship where you have larger components like that. Um, and when we get down here, I believe this is the power plant. It is. Um, big old doors are going to open and you're going to see, I mean, it's significantly large. Now, I don't know if there's a good or easy way for you to be able to change these out. Um, you probably need like a Titan suit or something in order to do it. Um, but that's going to be a theme on these larger ships. And as we go around, you can see that um, even, you know, shield generators are large. Come on, open up. There it goes. Um, that's going to be your uh, basilisk. Over here, you've got your radar. This isn't an in-game component yet, so it will be added at a later time. Um, but as that opens up, you can see that there is just nothing in there at the moment. Uh, and then over here, it's the same thing with life support. There's nothing behind the door because we obviously don't really have that in place today. Um, so we're going to call the elevator. And while we wait on that to come down, we'll come back into these rooms. Um, again, I think this is going to be your fuel tank. Um, it's labeled as an Aegis product. This looks almost like a standardized component. Um, this looks like, it, I mean, it says fuel tank engineer access only. It's the first time I've actually seen a fuel tank aside from like a drop pod like that's on the side of a, um, like a freelancer Dur. Um, there's one on either side. So I'm not 100% positive that that is a fuel tank. I think it's somewhere back there, but I don't know what that Aegis product is at the moment. Anyways, um, heading back to that main elevator, I'm going to show you the last part of the ship I wanted to showcase, and that's going to be the cartography room um, and the overall just fourth floor, which is probably the coolest area of this ship. Um, up, up here, what you're going to end up seeing is that you have kind of a room that's dedicated to mapping and kind of the overall experience. You can see it right in front of us right here. Um, Again, you've got like a hollow projector on the bottom and top to give you this experience. You can technically access the station, but it's really just a generic engineer station. At some point, you'll be interacting with this hologram in front of you to make different, um, you know, decisions about whether you're making, you know, a, you're kind of mapping a sector or you're maybe t deciding on um, what areas you want your ship to get to. Either way, it's just kind of a fun area where you could obviously entertain a good amount of people and really work together to figure out a plan of attack for your exploration purposes. Uh, and then last but not least, um, what you have over here is access to move to the front of the ship. Um, you've got escape pods back here. You've got some windows, which is a nice touch. Um, but what this airlock does is it takes you to an exterior access room where you get EVA and you're able to actually come out um, and get on top of the turret. You do lose gravity up here and you start floating around a little bit, so that experience is a little funny. Um, but, you know, it, it works for the most part. And then you end up having your window right here giving you um, an ability to see out as ships are coming and going and just getting a visual feel for everything about the ship. Um, overall, the ship flies pretty well. It's sluggish and a little bit piggy. Um, that being said, top speed ends up being about 1235, so it is relatively fast once you get the afterburners applied, so that's good news for this ship. Um, it cooks an afterburner. Um, the weaponry is pretty strong. It's got decent shields on it, so it doesn't seem to really struggle when it's being attacked. Um, I wouldn't consider this much of a fighting vessel, but I think it can protect itself just fine. Um, other things that I haven't seen yet would be the ability to retract the metal sheath around the cockpit. Um, I haven't figured out how to get that to work yet. I think I heard the devs say that that's going to be something that's coming later. Um, if somebody has figured out how to make that work yet, let me know though. Um, and then, yeah, that's really about it. Um, if you guys have questions about the Carrick, please feel free to let me know. Uh, it is a very, very, very well done ship. And while I don't necessarily um, I love the hype on this ship as much as everybody else does, just because exploration isn't really my gameplay, um, they did such a nice job with it that it is probably my new favorite interior of any ship, and it looks really good. So... Um, that's going to be it for this video. I appreciate you guys watching. Let me know if you have questions. Otherwise, stay tuned for more. Have yourselves a wonderful day and take care.